Hey guys, got another one from uh, eBay. I bought this little uh, temperature sensor. It's an Elitech RC4 miniature temperature data logger. So it's a little device you just set it going and stick it somewhere and all every one minute or five minute or hour or whatever you set, it'll take a temperature reading and then log that inside. Plug it into your computer through the USB cable and you'll get it like a CSV file or something you can drop into Excel or um, whatever software you need and then it'll give you a table or a chart of uh, all the temperature readings it took. So I've got a, um, a lightning detector up on my roof and um, that's from Blitzortung. I'll put a link down if you're interested in to see what that's all about. But um, I've got it in a box up on the roof so I want to put this in there during the summer and just see how hot it gets to see if I need to put a, a cooling fan or something. And then also I'll use it in winter to see if I need to put some sort of heater in there because we get a bit of snow here in Tokyo so I just want to make sure I'm, I'm not running my electronics outside its rated limits. So I thought we'd have a quick look at this and uh, see what the go is. So it comes with a few accessories there and uh, instruction card with a little booklet inside and then the unit itself just here. So it's a little neat little plastic unit. Put the battery in the back there and uh, it'll just tick away with whatever settings you make. So let's have a look at the specifications. So the temperature is Celsius or Fahrenheit. Uh, it's th minus 30 to plus 60 for the uh, internal sensor and for the external it's minus 40 to plus 85. So if you use the, the external sensor you get a, a wider uh, temperature range. Then it's uh, the accuracy is minus 20 to plus 40 is plus minus 0.5 degrees but if you go outside that range of minus 20 to plus 40 then it becomes plus minus 1 degree accuracy. Resolution of 0.1 degree uh, 16,000 points of recording, so 16,000 measurements. So if you do it once a second, you're going to get 16,000 seconds. If you do it once a day, 16,000 days. Uh, we've got the record interval. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. 10 seconds to 24 hours. So if it's uh, if you do it the minimum at 10 second intervals, you're going to get 160,000 seconds worth of reading. Uh, the sensor is internal is an NTC thermal resistor. That's that little one. I'll show you in a sec. It's a little glass sort of globe that's uh, hanging off the circuit board. It's a USB interface communications. Power supply is a 2450 battery or it can be powered over the USB interface. The 2450 is a little bit bigger than your normal uh, motherboard backup battery. Uh, you can still get them around but they went for a bigger one just for the longer battery life. So this is the guts of the, the unit. We've got our LC screen here. Up here just there, that's our temperature sensor, that's the inbuilt sensor. Looks like we've got a chip that's unpopulated here. Maybe there's a uh, temperature sensor chip or a uh, humidity sensor maybe for a uh, upgraded option. Then we've got our function button here. Uh, down here is our main chip. Now this is a uh, marked F0411. I'm not sure what that is. I couldn't find any information. It might be just a generic Chinese chip or it might be rebranded or something, like rebadged to a custom number. But down here, this one here is our uh, Scilabs SI2102. It's a UART to USB chip. So basically, it's doing the communications, converting this chip's information and communications to USB, doing all that sort of stuff. Then over here, we've got a little uh, ST Micro. It's a M2456, and that's a 256 kilobit uh, I squared C EEPROM. So that's going to be holding the memory and the uh, like the firmware and what, what for this unit. A USB port down here. Um, then over the back, we've got a little beeper that plugs in. Um, got an inductor here that might be like a filtering for either the screen or maybe the input jack here. That's for our external uh, temperature, or it could be a power supply thing. There's our battery connector. It's got like a, some soldered on bits of metal to make the contacts. And there's also another unpopulated chip here. So that's on the back of the E squared prom. So maybe there's an expanded memory thing here. Maybe if we have the uh, the chip here for the if that's a humidity, maybe there's another firmware chip or something goes there anyway. There's there's no markings except for U5, so I've got no idea what actual thing that's going to be. Um, and there's two headers over here. One says uh, debug, and one says download. So it looks like there's some JTAG headers or something, all nicely numbered out there. So uh, oh so hackable possibly. But that's uh, what we got inside here. Uh, a little crystal there. Some jelly bean parts around the place. But yeah, so let's uh, plug this in, turn it on, and see what happens. 
So it looks like we've run into a bit of a problem. I've got the battery inside here. You can see it's reading 30.2 degrees. I plug it into my computer. It's the uh, the little chipset in there, the Scilabs chip, you know, the UART bridge works, it, it installs the drivers. But there's a bit of software on here to actually do the configuration and that sort of thing. But it's on a small disk. I've got laptops and that. I don't have a desktop computer with a uh, normal tray load CD drive. I've only got slot load CD drive, so I can't use this disk. So I might look online and see if I can find the software or figure something out. I'll be right back. Okay, so once you've installed the software and you open the software up, this is what you're going to be greeted with. So first of all, you want to connect your device through the USB, but you're not going to see anything until you actually hit the connection button up here. And then you get the, the connection to the device, and you can see the work status here that shows me the uh, the model number, how many uh, space, like the total space, how many data points I can save, and a few other bits and pieces. Now in the center here you've got the record properties. You can't change this until you hit parameter set up the top here, and you're able to change these settings. But you've got to be careful because if you change the settings and hit save, as it says over here in the red, it's going to delete everything. It just wipes everything out and then puts the new settings in ready to uh, to record a new set of data. So just be aware of that before you change any settings. Save your stuff first. Now in the settings here you've got a few different bits and pieces. So the top one up here is a record interval and that's basically how often it takes a data point. I've got it set to 10 seconds and you can set it from anywhere from 10 seconds up to maybe 24 hours or something. Whatever you need to um, have set you can you just change it there. So then we've got delay time which is uh, how long it waits once you start recording until it starts you know, recording the, uh, the data points themselves. So you, you can press a button and it will give you half an hour before it starts recording. So you can put it in a box or put it into a place, let it stabilize and then it will wait for a bit and you know, start recording after a little, a little while. So moving down we've got uh, stop by button press. This is another good one. Uh, if you put it somewhere and you don't want people to tamper with it or turn it off and prevent recording from happening, you set that to prohibit. That way the only way you can stop the recording is to plug it into the software and stop it through the software. It uh, just prevents anyone getting their little sticky fingers on the device and uh, ruining your data capture. Uh, there's alarm settings and uh, tone settings and I think that's like beepers and that sort of stuff in the in the device. There's a beeper in there and you can set like a alarm so if it goes above or below a certain value it might beep and then you got your temperature limits so if it goes above or below that it's an invalid uh, reading and it'll set an alarm then oh yeah, you got the temperature calibration here as well so you can actually put this alongside another device like a, a fluke multimeter or a temperature calibration unit or something and then you can set the offset so if you if the unit is reading two degrees high compared to your calibration unit then you can put minus two degrees there and it'll bring it back down into calibration. And there's a few other things here. You can set the clock uh, that sets it from your PC time. Uh, and there's a, you know, a few other little settings for the, uh, the data there on the right hand side. So I've got some data in there. So to bring the data in, we've got to hit the upload data at the top left hand corner here. So we'll hit that button and we get a graph. So basically we've got it was sitting on my desk, it's cooled down as I was walking around the house, moved into a different room in the house, then I stuck it in the fridge, it started cooling down, then I pulled it out of the fridge and stuck it in the freezer, we've gone right down to minus 15 degrees, you can see their minimum value, minus 15.1, pulled it out, it started warming up in my hands, and then it just stabilised back to room temperature. So it's a nice graph, gives you a, a pretty smooth line there. Now you can export to like Excel and to a PDF and to Word and whatnot up to the top, and you can print this graph as well, a few other bits and pieces. So let's uh, export to PDF and we'll set it to test because I've already uh, tried this out and we'll save that, yes. Alright, so it's, it's exported to PDF. So that's basically the software in a nutshell. What we'll do is we'll get the, uh, the PDF open and I'll show you what it looks like. So here we've got the uh, PDF. You can see on the first page we've got the uh, stats of our recording. You've got some uh, settings here. You can set like a few of the text boxes and that. You've got the uh, minimum and maximum temperatures, uh, start and stop times, all the usual sort of stuff that we saw on the um, in the software there. If we travel down, 
we can see the uh, the graph there from the start to the finish just like in the software again and if we head further down we'll get all the uh, data points themselves so there's a whole heap of these like I think it's about three pages worth but we can have up to 16,000 so you're gonna have a number of pages there which you can um, go through and just analyze all the data of course if you were to export this as CSV or to your Excel spreadsheet you can make your own graphs and do your own data analysis and that, all that sort of stuff and uh, yeah whatever you need to do so that's um, exporting the data it seems to work quite well so it's yeah that side of things is not a problem at all so let's see how how accurate this thing is I've got the fluke here with a the thermocouple it's been this has been sitting on the desk for a little while just stabilizing and whatnot now the uh, thermocouples aren't 100% accurate, there are more accurate ways to, uh, to measure temperature but for our purposes it's going to be good enough. This has been uh, calibrated and every time it's been calibrated it's always come in uh, better than the, uh, the specification. So 26.7, 26.8 degrees, if I hit this button, 26. So we're 0.8 degree out according to the fluke. But that's, that's fine because we got that, uh, that calibration um, parameter we can set so we can make this match this and then we know that we're going to be reading an accurate value. So I'll definitely put this thing into use. It's a, a rugged little unit. It's not too cheap and nasty. It's, it's quite well made physically and the software is pretty good too. Quite intuitive to use. With the probe as well, it's uh, doing exactly as advertised. So I'm going to give it a thumbs up. And don't forget guys, we've got a Patreon now, so check it out if you feel like it. If not, just keep watching the videos and we'll see you next time.